Welcome back everyone, I'm Max Forte. Today we're going to be talking about some fragrances that are upcoming releases of the most prestigious houses. This is going to be like a fragrance news type of thing, which I shared with you last month talking about the upcoming releases of some of these brands that are mostly looking forward to trying. And this is going to be like a first thoughts kind of things. And then eventually I'll give you guys the first impressions or reviews in the upcoming months. So without any further ado, guys, let's hop into these fragrances. Welcome everyone. Today we have a few new releases that we're going to talk about. Two from Dunhill, one from Tom Ford Private Blends, one from Victor and Rolf, you know, from the Spice Bomb, uh, you know, line of fragrances, one from Azaro, and one from Ralph Lauren. So guys, brace yourselves. Let's hop into these fragrances. First fragrance we're going to talk about is Azaro. This is going to be one called Cologne Intense. Now, as we've seen lately this year so far in the first quarter, most designer releases have been Eau de Parfum, you know, EDP flankers or cologne intense. It's something that most designer brands are really gravitating towards their releases this year. And this one here is no different. It's called Azaro Simply Pour Homme Cologne Intense. And from the note breakdown, it's pretty much lime up top with lavender. Barbershop is what comes to mind. And then this mastic uh, note in the base. Now, mastic could be a combination of different things, which mostly it's going to be like a coniferous slash uh, galbanum or green kind of a nuance. What I'm thinking this fragrance is going to be, it's going to be a modernized version of a fougere, like a fresh fougere, if you will. So I love fougere fragrances, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. You guys, if you follow this channel for any length of time, you know I love my fougeres, especially the Azaro Pour Homme, the original from 1978. So this one here has me really, uh, you know, my interest is very perked, really peaked, because I think it could be a really nice uh, release. As I see a lot of companies also gravitating towards like you know, original takes or modernized versions of fougeres or old school type scents. So I'm thinking this is going to be a really good one. And the latest we've seen from Azaro, which was that uh, Essence collection, which we had the mint, the ginger lover one, and all those fragrances that we talked about heavily here in the community last year. I have really good feelings about this one because I think Azaro is in a good, uh, you know, streak of good releases. Even though they're not very expensive, these are cheapies that are definitely goodies. So high hopes for this one. Next up, we're going to talk about and highlight the Icon series from Dunhill is one that I absolutely love. Elite is great. Absolute's fantastic. The original Icon is really nice. Vetiver, you know, floral, fruity type of a scent. Very mature, uh, very well put together, sophisticated. All in all, this whole Icon series are actually pretty good value. Even when you look at Icon Racing Green, which is kind of like what this is like. It's like a sub line of a collection, you know, the Icon series and you had the Icon Racing. This is going to be Icon Racing Red and Icon Racing Blue. So the Icon Racing Green, which was the first one in this collection here, is going to be a fragrance that's very similar to Paco Rabanne Invictus Aqua from 2016. What I love about Icon Racing Green is because it amplifies the minty note up top, which makes it really more uh, exciting, invigorating and refreshing than Paco Rabanne Invictus Aqua was. Still long lasting, very, very similar, like they could be brothers or cousins in the same scent profile. Now, red and blue are very interesting in the sense that the notes here are a little bit different, but I think they're going to be boring elements and perhaps giving each one of these scents a little different facet. From the note breakdown here, looking at the blue, Icon Racing Blue, it's going to be more of a marine slash aquatic type of a scent or blue type of a scent. You're going to have the Ambroxan, sea salt, there's some marine notes in there, some spices as well, some woods. But because of that merino, the ambergris, and the sea salt, I'm thinking it's going to be more of an aquatic kind of a scent, like a blue style scent, which could be quite good, especially if it's long lasting and powerful. Could be a great, great other addition to the uh, the Icon series. Now, looking at the red Icon Racing Red, it looks like it's going in towards a totally different, more spicier, woody, spicy kind of direction. We're talking about solar notes pimento note, frankincense, vetiver, some really darker or stronger notes here, you know, spicier notes like the red pimento that's added on here, the frankincense, there's oak moss in the base. So this one here from all the, you know, the notes that I'm reading here is definitely the one that's piquing my interest the most. I think, you know, Dunhill Icon Racing Red is definitely going to be one that I really want to check out because it has more of that, uh, you know, more darker and stronger facet that I come to appreciate more in fragrances rather than your blue, uh, you know, run of the mill freshies out there. But I think both could actually be quite good releases that I'm really looking forward to checking it out, trying and sharing with you guys in the next few uh, weeks to come. And now Ralph Lauren is always, you know, very um, known to do flankers every year in the Polo collection, which is really their more predominant or top selling 
line of fragrances. And this particular one, Polo Cologne Intense, just like a Zaro Cologne Intense. This one's gonna follow suit to the designer, like I talked about, Cologne Intense releases. Now from their latest flankers in the Polo collection, I haven't really been impressed by anything that Polo has put out since the Red Extreme Red Intense. I think those were really good ones, especially Red Extreme from the Polo collection was quite a good one. But since then, there hasn't really been any Polo fragrance that really caught my attention uh, worth really talking or mentioning in the top video. This particular one, though, has me really curious because, again, it's a Cologne Intense variation of the original Polo Green, which I absolutely love. So I'm thinking this perhaps could be something really uh, great and, and worth, you know, bragging home about. The last great Polo Green variant was the Polo Green uh, Special Reserve from 2008, which has been discontinued and it was an extremely great release, which I do own a bottle. And if this is any indication, if this release is any close to that particular fragrance, you know, Special Reserve, we could be on to a really good, you know, potentially one of the best designer releases of 2021. The notes actually look pretty good. You have violet leaf, you have some uh, herbal components. The only thing that has me a little bit worried and scratching my head a little bit is the use of ambroxan. Whenever I see the word ambroxan or, you know, amber wood nowadays, it just, for the most part, is just more of the same. I'm hoping that, you know, hoping against hope here that this could actually be something that I will, you know, be wrong, completely wrong, and this will actually be a good release. Again, if it's any close to Special Reserve from 2008, this could be a really good one. And actually the fragrance I was talking about was not Special Reserve, it was called Modern Reserve from 2008, guys. This is an extremely great release from Polo Green. Again, this is going to be a variation of the Polo Green's Polo Green Cologne Intense. So if it's any close to this one here, I'm gonna be a very happy camper. Spice Bomb has a new flanker, you know, from Victor and Rolf, and this particular one is going to be called Infrared, which has a gradient color. The bottle is going to be dark black gradient to red, which is really good. I love the color red. The bottle itself looks great, and the note breakdown actually looks pretty interesting. The notes, guys, look absolutely fire. We're talking habanero chili pepper. We're talking dried fruits, cinnamon, and tobacco, as well as benzoin. So if the notes are you know, constructed correctly, if they're executed properly, this fragrance could be an absolute stunning juice. I mean, I love tobacco on my fragrances from the red fruits, the chili pepper. What comes to mind here, and I would be ecstatic if this fragrance is close to, is pure chili, which is really called a taste of fragrance from Mugler, which has been discontinued now for years. This fragrance here from the note breakdown looks like it could be very similar to that particular fragrance from Mugler plus the tobacco. So really, really high hopes for this one. I think from everything that I've been talking about so far, this is one that got me the most excited for. So guys, Infrared from Victor and Rolf, Spice Bomb Infrared is one that I'm really hoping it's gonna be a great release. Let me know in the comments if you guys are equally as excited as I am for this release. And Tom Ford Private Blend is back at it again as every year with another flanker. This particular one is the third installment of the Soleil collection. You know, previously we had Soleil Neige and we had Soleil Blanc. Now we have Soleil Brulant, which is going to be translating to English, uh, Scorching Sun. So from the note breakdown, this perhaps is going to be my favorite as I thought the previous two were more feminine. Soleil Blanc has this beautiful coconut suntan lotion kind of a vibe. And Soleil Neige, I haven't really tried, but this particular one here has me really curious due to the note breakdown. It's got vetiver, it has this solar note, it's got some orange, you know, mandarin oranges, frankincense. So from the note breakdown, it seems like it's going to be a dark and resinous kind of com contribution from Tom Ford, which I absolutely love. When it comes to private blend, I think of powerful, you know, long, you know, powerful projection kind of fragrances that are very unique and very creative. And this one here has me really at hello. Pretty much from what I understand here, looking at the note breakdown, it's gonna start with this solar note, pink pepper, bergamot, some citruses, you know, orange. Then as you get into the, the, the hard and into the dry, that looks like the fragrance is gonna take a turn for the darker, uh, more resinous type of a scent. And the notes that really got me curious here and very excited about are black honey, resins like labdanum, you know, frankincense, vetiver and leather. So the bottle looks amazing. I love this, you know, golden, you know, shiny kind of a bottle and the notes are just fire. And again, just like Spice Bomb, if the notes are put together, 
very nicely. I think this perhaps could potentially be one of the best Tom Ford private blends we've seen in a while. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for me. The top six fragrances that I'm really looking forward to checking out and sharing with you in the next few weeks to come. These are fragrances that I'm looking very vividly now to try to capture a bottle and, of course, wear it, review it, and share it with you guys. Let me know in the comments if any of these or which one of these sound most interesting to you. And, of course, what other top releases you guys heard about that you guys are really looking forward to checking out this year in 2021 right now. It's March, so what have you heard out there that's coming out or is scheduled to be released that you guys are really looking forward to checking out? Of course, I'll try to get a bottle and share with you my thoughts very soon. Of course, guys, stick around. Stay tuned for more. I'll come back with some more fragrance content to keep you in the know very soon. Take care.